Hello there, hi, it's Julie Rothall here from rtheaven.com. Um, if you caught me live yesterday, you might have seen me setting up my uh, miniature home studio at home. Um, and today I am going to show you a few ways of painting with encaustic wax when you, or hot wax painting, when you don't have all the proper kit. So I've set my table up here. I'm going to put it into this hold. And let me show you what we're going to do and some ideas for you to try out at home. So hopefully this will come out okay. So what I wanted to start with, if you've seen me painting before, um, you will have seen that I have been painting with these, uh, well, with various tools, but with um, a craft iron, some wax blocks, and I've got proper encaustic paper um, that I have been painting with. But if you, at the moment, we can't get hold of supplies, we can't go out and get the kit. So what can you do if you don't have that? So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you some DIY versions, give you some tips to try out at home. So um, anybody can do this, but um, it, you know, I wouldn't recommend necessarily young, young children. Um, but you know, you sort of 11 and up. But um, there are a few key things that you just need to be aware of. So what I'm going to show you is um, if you've got an old craft iron tucked away somewhere in your, not craft iron, sorry, travel iron tucked away anywhere. Um, this is one that I had. I used to have one that was very similar to this that literally tucked away and it was a, you know, it would sit in a drawer and I think I finally threw it away way before I started painting with wax just because I never ever used it. It sat in the wardrobe and when I was having a declutter and a clear out I ditched it. Um, it so you might have one of those in your in your uh, house somewhere tucked away in the loft. Um, I've got this one actually as well. This is one that I did have down in the cupboard. Now the difference between these two is really for encaustic wax work, hot wax work, you could do with a, a, I think they call it a dry iron. So without, preferably, if you can find that. This one, and also if you if you have one that that attaches like this, they will often sit in and you can use it as a miniature hot plate. And it's really, if you've got one like that, that is perfect. And you're, um, you're more or less the stylus. Oh, sorry, the encaustic iron. Um, sorry, it's been a busy morning. My brain's trying to catch up on things. Uh, so, yeah, you're more or less the same. What you might find, though, is that the, these have a really, really constant and steady thermostat to them. So depending on your model, you might find that your thermostat cuts in and out a little bit. But, um, but you know, it will, it will do for what we're going to, I'm going to show you today. Now, this one is, this is actually a miniature steam iron. going to be used again then you know it's, it's not going to hurt massively it's not going to do any any good you certainly won't be able to use it again too well after um but i haven't used one with a steam iron outside of my normal ram but what i'm going to show you is a different way that you can use it so this section here i can use the heat here um but what this one doesn't have whereas this one has a handle that detaches this one doesn't so it's all fixed it's a fixed unit by the looks of it um oh actually I don't know. It looks like it might have a handle that comes off, but I'm not going to worry about that now. Done is a really basic, basic, you know, you, so you're going to need to improvise according to what tools you can get hold of here. So I've just got a couple of um, like giant Jenga blocks that I've just kind of lashed together with a bit of wood just to hold that iron in place and keep it stable. So as I say, this is all about being as creative as, uh, 
we can with the equipment that we have at the moment. So this isn't how I would ordinarily work, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas. So if you've got a travel iron at home, you can go and try this. A um, couple of key points to make is make sure you start off at the absolute lowest setting for what I'm going to show you and just bring it up slowly, slowly, according to, you know, you don't want to kick off right on heat because what will happen if you overheat your wax, um, I just need to make sure this is on, um, if you overheat your wax, yeah, make sure it's on, um, Release fumes and you, you know, you've just got to be really careful of your health and safety. Also, you're not sure what is in the can, so the waxes that you might be using, you're not sure what's in them. Um, so always, always go for the lowest setting and, and bring it up slowly. And if you've got children doing this, please supervise them just to make sure that they're, they're okay and they're safe. So first of all, I'm going to show you the, the, the simplest way of painting. Now... This is an encaustic paper, um, but you can use any paper. So I was just having practice last night. I'm not going to do finished pictures. I'm just going to show you some examples. Um, so I've got some old crayon, wax crayons here. They are left over from when the kids were tiny. Um, so this is a standard children's, I mean, see how old they are. They're all dusty. Um, my children are well into their teens now. But, you know, a lot of us have these laying around the place. Just going to check the comments again quickly. Oh, somebody's watching and can see me, so that's good. I can't see the exact comments. I'll come back in a little while and um, just see if there's any questions. So what you can do is say, make sure you're on, the, you know, the lowest setting. Um, so first of all, just put your paper on your iron and have a go at drawing and melting the wax on. So can, uh, hopefully you can see that is actually melting quite nicely. Can you see how fluid that is? And it's it's still running here at the moment as well. So these wax crayons are, um, I'm not sure what they're made of, but they ha they're just basically coloured wax pigments, but they're a much lower grade wax than what I would normally use um, in my wax paintings. But you can still get some really nice effects in them. So they, they might have, so I don't know, soy wax, I don't know what's in them. Um, but they will melt. So you can work at a much, much lower temperature than um, I would when I'm working on my finished pictures. If I compare that to just colouring, you know, obviously depending what surface you're on, with a normal crayon you can see the difference in the you know the finishes with melting it and using that heat from the iron and um, and just using the, the wax crayon cold so that's one way and all that is people wonder what encaustic painting is it's just basically painting with hot wax so even with wax and a crayon people think it's the actual wax that's encaustic it's not it's the process of heating so it's the process of painting with wax and heat um, it comes from a Greek word to, uh, in Carlin to burn in. It's a really complicated word. Um, but that's all it is. You're in, by doing this, you are encaustic painting. Simple as. Now, these, um, these waxes are quite a low-grade wax, and I wouldn't use them in a finished painting um, within my art practice. But for playing at home, picture on the fridge for a week, absolutely fine. So just have fun with it. But, you know, if you've got these, have a... Have a play with them, do some colour blending. See what you can come up with. And this is just a bit of printer paper. Obviously, I'm working on quite a small scale. But you know, see what shapes and patterns you can get. But I say the key is the lowest temperature that you can get. Um, so to wipe and clean your iron off, just take a piece of tissue, toilet tissue, and wipe it off. Simple as that. But use a different variety of papers. So um, this is a piece of card that I had, you know, have a go with a magazine. Obviously, I'm, I'm trying to avoid these um, steam holes here, so I'm just using this small area at the end. If you've got a bigger area, you can, and then, you know, you can have a larger, pe a larger piece of paper and move it around. But try, just try with some different surfaces and just have some fun with it and play. In fact, I wonder what happens if I go over those steam holes. I don't know. But just, you know, just play, just, and you will feel, begin to feel, by doing this, you'll begin to feel how, 
just honestly that feeling of applying hot wax it's so smooth and it's just really relaxing and therapeutic and you can create some really really cool finishes and textures with this so I'll keep showing you some more techniques um, as I do these lives each day but for starters see what you can come up with with that um, in terms of painting on on paper on the top and use different you know variety of pictures and by all means pop them into take photos and pop them into the comments below if you actually have a go with this so that's one way of just painting at home if you've got an old travel iron and some wax crayons you're good to go um another way so i'm quite i don't know if i ever will use this for clothes it never has been but i don't particularly want to clog up an iron with wax unnecessarily so another thing you can do is you can actually use um a, you know a tin and keep your wax contained within a tin so the way you would do that so i've got this really grotty old candle here but i'm pretty sure it's a it's a fairly nice quality wax um i think it i, I don't know if it is pure beeswax the one thing to say here um as we get into this is um, these Crayola crayons are definitely safe, they're suitable for children. As you get into candles, you want to think about, try and, if you've got something, try and make sure it's as close to beeswax as you can. Um, it, think about what your candles may have had in them, so are they perfumed? Um, some of the tea lights these days are actually made of a synthetic material as well, so you don't want to be melting those. You want to make sure you're not getting them really hot. Again, go to this lowest um, heat that you can possibly do. Now up here in my studio, I've got numerous windows. When I'm working, so when I'm not on these two o'clock lives, I'm working on my own artwork. I've got all the windows open. I've got windows both sides and I've got a really good through draft. So you want to think ventilation. Um, I close them up whilst I'm doing the lives because it just gets too noisy. I've got traffic and lawnmowers and people outside and what have you so I just close it whilst I'm doing these lives but if I'm working here on my own um, I've got plenty of fresh air coming through so make sure you're near either near a window or even work if you can get some power outside and you're safe to do so work out in the garden um, anyway let me put this in so you can keep your wax contained within this wax pot so you could use a tuna tin a mackerel tin um, and what you can do then is you can actually use a paintbrush. So if you've got a natural, preferably natural hair, um, synthetic tends to frizzle, but working at such a low temperature, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Now this, I think I might just need to turn my iron up just a little bit, just to get that heat up through the base of this. So whilst that's heating, I'm just going to take this off and just check if there's any comments as we come through. And what I will do, oh, hello Rose, hello, nice to see you on here, thank you for joining. Um, okay, I can't see any other comments, so good. Um, I've lost my train of thought completely now, so I was just checking there weren't any other comments coming through. Uh, I'll show you how you can make your own, if you haven't got your own coloured wax blocks, I'll show you how you can make them with, if you've got some, I'll start off with oil paints. Um, and I'll show you the process that we go through to do that. Um, there are lots and lots of different ways and I can share more of those with you over the coming week or I will link up. I've actually got a free five day course that touches on this online course. Um, and I've actually got a Wax and Daymar course as well, which shows you the, the proper way. But this is literally designed to be using materials that we've got, you know, in at home in the house whilst we can't get out to the shops. Whilst so... This is melting away, okay. Let me put this back in and flip this back around. So I'll show you some close-ups in a minute in case you couldn't light this shining right in. These are just some of the, you know, pieces. Let me put it in the shade. It might be too much glare there. You know, obviously these aren't finished pieces, but you can see how this starts to blend together. Um, and this is where I was just beginning to get, so that's where you would have a cold wax crayon as opposed to a hot wax crayon. Um, one thing I must say is you don't...
nicely. Um, I've got a natural hair brush here, um, wax on it. So this, uh, I, if I if this brush was clean, then paint on clear wax, which you can do. This has got a bit of yellow pigment on it. Um, the great thing about encaustic wax painting is you there's no you don't need to clean anything up. You can just turn your heat off. It will solidify, and when you want to come back again, turn your heat on, and you'll get back to the molten form. So this is currently solid. However, if I mix it in here, you will start to see, actually even already that's happened quite quickly. I don't know if you can see how flexible, you paint onto something, you can see that that's actually quite flexible in terms of um, the brush. So I can begin to paint now. So if you get some little containers of colours made up, can begin to blend colours. Um, this tin is beginning to get a little bit hot so if you've got a wooden clothes peg that can be quite helpful just to make sure it doesn't fall off and run away. But what you can begin to do when you have this clear wax, I don't suspect this is going to build in too many layers because it is, it's not um, it doesn't have any Daymar resin in, but you can just have fun with it and play with it. So what I would I do with my other waxes, I will, I haven't got any examples here actually, you can add in leaves, um, things you've collected in the gardens, grasses, and you can kind of begin to sandwich, um, you know, found objects in between the layers. And you can just keep adding layers on top of one another. But as I say, for the purpose of this, if you're using an old wax candle, it's not going to become a museum quality piece so just have fun with it. Um, in normal practice we would um, fuse between each layer and I'll come on to that on another video show you how you could do that at home if you haven't got the kit. But can you see how you're beginning to kind of get these really lovely layers building up so even with the homemade kits you can get some really lovely well you know kits um, homemade products you can get some really nice finishes with that. Okay so I was colouring that wax from so that was a clear bit clear candle wax here it's a grotty old candle so you don't need even to have a, a really good quality one and that has turned yellow just from some of the paint that i had or wax that i had on my paintbrush from previously but if your brush is clean and you want to get some color what i will show you is you can actually pigment your own color waxes so there are ways you can do this as well so as I say, I've got full resources on my website, but I'm just going to show you, like, you know, show you a, a different tactic each day, if you will. Um, if at any point you start to, if you can kind of feel that any of the um, wax is kind of getting up your nose or back your throat or anything at all, turn it off, make sure it cools down, go outside, get some. Um, seriously, we're not sure what's, you know, if you can get hold of a pure beeswax candle, that is going to be your best bet. But there are health and safety implications of painting with wax that I cover fully in my online courses. Um, but for, um, so literally kind of go very small scale and just have a little practice and work out your temperatures before you kind of get into this in a huge, great scale. Release loads of fumes. And, you know, if you're not fully familiar with the health and safety aspects, um, just just kind of go slowly, please. And uh, feel free to ask me any questions. So one of the things you can do is you can actually colour your own wax blocks. So you can use oil paints. Now, if I squeeze this straight into here, all of the oil, it doesn't allow the wax to set. The wax won't allow the oil paint to dry. So what you need to do is you need to go through a process. This is what I do um, on, with my students and like up in my workshops. Just pop some on a piece of um, toilet tissue or kitchen towel and then just leave it for a while um so just kind of put a blob out and you'll see you should be able to see already it's beginning and what's going to happen is this oil is going to leach out so you want to leave that for a good few hours maybe even overnight um sometimes you can spread it around a little bit just to share it around once that oil has come out when we come back on tomorrow hopefully you can see on camera that oil would have will have been absorbed by the tissue and then we can literally, you're left with a pigment, so we can then scrape that pigment into a clear wax. So we'll do another one tomorrow. 
clear wax, red pigment, <coughs> scrape it in, and we will be left with a really nice red wax that we can use. So I'll show you how to do that tomorrow. Um, let me just check if we've got any more questions. Sunday afternoon is lovely, so um, people are probably busy. One or two still here. Thanks for staying on. So there we go. So let me show you this close up. Uh, sorry, doing this one handed. So just be careful, you know, just go carefully, basically. But, you know, you can have an awful lot of fun with this. So you can see how molten that is. It's going to have a much lower melting point than the normal wax I use. But the same principles are going to apply. So don't worry about what find whatever you've got at home. So this is just a normal printer paper and you can see it's actually just literally kind of sucked that right up within the paper. But you can get some nice translucent effects with that. But start to lay it, you know, paste it over the top of the picture. Just have some fun with it to start with and just get a feel of how it works. If you want to get into creating a finished picture, then wonderful. This is actually a really um, translucent pigmented colour at the moment because there was only a bit of paint on there. So... Um, you can get some really, really deep colours going. So we'll get more into this as time goes on. Anyhow, I hope that makes sense. Um, hopefully I wasn't blathering on too much and uh, I made a little bit, yeah, made a bit of sense there. So anyway, something to try. So any any paper, Crayola crayons and an iron, think ventilation, start it on the lowest, lowest heat you can and then slowly bring it up. Um, and then let me know how you get on. Post any pictures in the comments below that you create um, and I will come back on tomorrow. I'll show you how to make that a coloured wax block with your own oil pigments, uh, oil paints. Um, and we'll look at some other techniques that you might be able to use as well. All right, I'll say cheerio now. Bye.